Gardening with Andrew. Today, we're going to have a roundup of all the bits and bobs we've been looking at the last couple of weeks and just kind of show you what's going on in the garden. Uh, the three big things are the moonflower, which we did last week. It's actually come up already, so that was pretty fantastic and fast. To the, the radish experiment from the Radish Rage episode. And three, the Tiny Tim tomatoes, which are doing lovely in their little greenhouse spot. So, oh, and then also some failed tomatoes. That'll be exciting. So let's take a look. Okay, so the first thing is the radish experiment, which, if you remember, has three parts. There's all from the same seed packet, but one has been sitting in there since 2019. That is these guys right along here, which are looking okay, kind of stringy, very leggy, been nibbled a bit. So if we get a zoom in there, oh, look at that, beautiful. Very strange, not really like a healthy kind of radish. And over here, kind of mixed in with the uh, carrots, we have the same seed packet, but from a second generation. So I grew a bunch of radishes in the garden here and harvested the seeds, and that's what these guys are. They're looking a bit better, but also not that great. Uh, both of them were sunburned. That's, that's what you can see here. So this is a great learning opportunity. Ah, no, this guy, there he is. That white leaf there, that's a classic sign of sunburn. You can see uh, the center part still has some color, but the outsides are all white. Um, and you can see that in a few other spots here. All of them got sunburned. They've recovered now, mostly, but that'll be a permanent disadvantage for them. So that'll slow down their growth for a long time. Um, and they got sunburned because they were living inside under a grow light, and then they moved outside too fast. So just like when you move plants inside to outside, you have to get them used to the temperature. You also have to get them used to the light levels, unless you have a really powerful grow light, which mine is not, because you know mine's a 40-watt LED grow light compared to the sun. Not really the same thing. The third uh, row, which is now coming up over here, uh, is that same seed packet, but I just planted them right here in a row with no particular uh, effort. Just kind of tossed them in there, and they're looking great. I've actually thinned them out. This is about a third of them that actually came up. They all came up doing great, and I moved a bunch to the back because they were too close together. You want your radishes about two inches apart, so to your uh, big knuckle there kind of a thing. But they're looking good. Notice uh, no sunburn, really. Um, they have sort of a, a reddish tinge on some of them, and that's just because it's a bit cold still. So we're still getting frosts, but that should stop soon. And then all of these guys should be doing great. Oh, lovely. But otherwise, in here, look at these great carrots. Oh, these are good. This is a uh, uh, Kyoto Red? Kyoto? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, that kind of thing. 
Oh, got some lettuce over here. And this is Amsterdam prickly winter spinach, that green one. And then this is Rilds de Elf, the red one. Oh, those guys are finally coming along. They've been real slow. But man, oh man, they're getting there. Ooh, maybe in the back here, you want to see these guys? Ooh, these I planted last year. They're somehow still growing, as are these ones over here. Look at these. Ooh, baby. That's some quality Swiss chard right there. These are over, they're about 13 months old, and we've just been harvesting them as they come along. They kind of slowed down in winter, but they're coming back now. Um, you can see some of these, some of these guys are looking a little worse for wear, but you know, they feed the aphids, and that's uh, that's all we need them for. And then in the bit, bit here, ooh, some Chichi Mitsai. Hello. These we grew indoors, put them in the greenhouse for several weeks. We grew them in um, toilet paper tubes. <laughs> <laughs> which totally worked. So they're a little small, but their color is changing. They're becoming a really interesting shade. There we go. So hard to focus. Okay. Oh, sort of hard to see in there, but oh, they're becoming a lovely shade of green there. Ooh, and over here we got some peas. This is Laxton Progress. Right behind here. Laxton Progress. This is like a pole bean, so it's going to grow up this string here, which I have tied to this curly Q fella. And I'm going to get some more string and run it all along there. So we have peas growing all the way along down here, laxed in progress. And here we have magnolia blossom. These are cooler to look at. Ooh, yeah. They're like a tendril-y kind of pole bean. So they're just going to get tons and tons of tendrils and also make peas, theoretically. Uh, over here we have our fava beans, which are looking gorgeous. This grows really well here in the Central Valley. Um, yeah, they're just cool. You can eat the leaves of favas, so it's just like a nice green to toss in a salad. But you can see, even though they're not even that tall for favas, they're already making little flowers. The flowers are adorable, attract the pollinators, and then they make ginormous beans. Check it out. They're a lot of work, favas. you got to process them, but oh, so worth it. But the real amazing wonder from this week is this fella. So let's see if I can do it. <laughs> holding this rig here you undo the clothes pin tied very carefully to this and then you can lower <laughs> there we go okay so it's a lid and then I can raise it do 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 oh so hard to do with one hand all right let's just <laughs> bear with me here Billions of blue blistering barnacles. Come on. Okay. Anyway, this thing, this concept here, is called a cold frame. And a cold frame usually made out of wood, but we're moving soon, so I figured I'd just make one out of cardboard. This is the halfway house. This is what the radishes needed, but I didn't have. So you can have a greenhouse, leg of this guy, where you can put stuff out and it's nice and toasty and warm at night and during the day so that'll help accelerate the growth of the plants and keep them safe from the from the frost but eventually they got to go out and if you put them straight out of the greenhouse they'll almost certainly die especially if it's still frosting at night so you put them in a thing like this and then every day you adjust the lid to a different height so you open it up a little bit more every single day bada bing bada boom you got yourself a, a slow transition to the outside world. And we got all sorts of stuff in here. Got some sweet peas in the back, which make flowers instead of delicious peas. Very poisonous. Some galardia, which is a flower. This is uh, these guys over here, nicotininoia, nicotininoia, which is like nicotine, right? It's a tobacco plant, but it's not the smoking kind. It's the flowering kind. Here's some bigger examples over here which are also transitioning to the outside world. Um, I've never grown these before, but they are doing great. Look at that, great foliage, very delicate. You can see they break very easily, but these guys are coming along, grew these in the greenhouse, slowly transitioning them to outdoors. And you can see right at the top there, oh, flowers are coming, little tiny flowers, but apparently they smell really good in the evenings. They like wait till the evenings to, to make smells come out. So that's cool. Also, look at this. Ooh, not a great pot. And really long wooden stems coming all the way up. Boop. 
This is a California native. This is a volunteer plant. We just didn't pull it out, so a weed uh, by another name. And it's now making these little flowers. It's over a year old. Uh, and I've seen this growing in the local natural kind of areas, but I have no idea what it is, but it has a nice smell to it. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Kale, look at all that kale. This kale lives normally under this, but during the day we give it uh, some, some air airflow. And then we have our big bed here, which is just full of edible things that we can like cut and come again sort of things. Under these bells here, uh, these are uh, parsnips, which never grown before, but they're looking pretty good. And what's interesting about these parsnips, like this one and then this guy here, which you can see they're starting to look pretty good. They've been taking a while, but they're getting there. These two and this one over here, which is also looking good, I, I kept them under the bells their entire life, um, compared to the other ones which I planted directly out. This one here. See how little he is? Or this one over here. Or this one, just slightly covered. Those guys, I planted them directly into this bed after their life in the nursery. Uh, these other ones, they've been under these domes their whole lives. And you can see they're like 10 times the size. So protecting your plants in the winter is super important, however you can do it. Um, you can see you don't even need fancy bells. You can just use any old bit of plastic you got. As long as the light can get in, it'll be good. These guys are the uh, spinach, you know, like when you get a big thing of spinach or power greens in a box. Um, you can use those as mini greenhouses. Oh, so you can see it's collecting a lot of water there. So it's working. Nothing to see, oops, sorry, uh, <laughs> nothing to see under there. But this is where uh, we planted the moonflower from last week. So check out that video to see more about what's going on there. But it's real warm in there. The soil is warm and that's what we're looking for. And it keeps the moisture. I guess the most exciting stuff though is happening in the greenhouse, the, the Franken greenhouse, uh, which, you know, it's a practical, practical uh, fella here. This out of the way has three entrances for easy access. And this is where everything I'm growing in my nursery indoors with the grow light comes out here in these paper pots, which we show you how to do in another video. But here's all my peppers. Oh, look at that. We have sugar rush peach. We have lacuchar, uh, which is a paprika. Ozark, which is a bell pepper. Um, and then this fish pepper at the end, which is a native, uh, sort of, yeah, native uh, American, I mean native to America type of pepper. Not native, but cultivated in America by African Americans many years back. Uh, almost fell out of existence, but is starting to have a comeback here. So very cool pepper, super prolific. Uh, great for cooking. <laughs> and this is, we have a plum in our front yard. Um, that grows like ornamental plums that are still delicious. So I'm trying to make cuttings. I just put them in paper pots and they're flowering without any roots. I just transplanted them recently, but <laughs> just, they're going for it. Look, now there's, there's leaves growing. So even without any roots, they're growing leaves and flowers. So I'm hoping while they're doing that, they're also creating uh, other stuff. So on the ground here, it's kind of hard to see. We've got some beets, some golden beets there. There's more Swiss chard in the back. They're not doing well because they had a, spent a long time in the pots in a hard winter coming through. This area had plants in it, but the combination of the clay soil, which is totally compacted, um, and the fact that the cat likes to lay here, good old Gessie, uh, when it's warm, you know, makes it a hard spot to grow. <laughs> but otherwise, we just have, we're not going to go through all this. Um, there's all sorts of stuff. Got some cilantro, some gallardia. Uh, some basil. Ooh, some of them aren't looking good. Yeah, the frost has been brutal the last couple days here. Got some more peas down here. Oh, look at that. Some cilantro, which is bolting. Um, yeah, the frost lately, even though these guys are in a greenhouse, the frost still got a lot of these plants. So there's been some losses, definitely. Oh, quite a few losses. Look at these guys. These marigolds look terrible. Where are they? Ooh, man, they did not look like that two days ago. Oof. Anyway. Um, the trick with these paper pots I'm finding is you got to water them probably daily, especially if it's in a warm place like a greenhouse. 
uh, that kind of thing. But down the way a bit is a fantastic example of failure. I think a lot of uh, garden type YouTubers and people who share information online don't really show you the mistakes. Um, but that is literally half of gardening. You will kill a lot of plants as you learn, and even when you're good, you still kill a lot of plants. So it's just part of the deal. Just don't worry about it, homie. Um, so these are Cherokee tomatoes and carbon tomatoes in the back, which are two varieties that are real hot right now, but they all died uh, from the frost. Maybe this guy's okay. There's one there that might make it, <laughs> but ooh. Um, yeah, they just all, they all died. So too cold out here. We're still getting frost. Hopefully tonight's the last night, but you never know. Um, yeah, otherwise other stuff going on there. You can see more pots over there. Everything is just waiting for spring to actually happen and the frost to stop. As soon as we're sure there's no more frost, uh, then, you know, we'll put stuff out. But um, yeah, that's it for today. Beautiful beans. Mm -hmm.